This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. We now have the panel that is most hotly debated. The end user security awareness training, hot or not. I have with me an esteemed panel of guests to debate the topic. Uh, let's see. So I have with me uh, Dave Vitel, hopefully Lance Spitzner, uh, Javed Malik, uh, Damon, a.k.a. Phone Boy, and Space Rogue. I'll give them each uh, three to four minutes uh, to explain their views. Uh, I also have Dave, the AV guy, who's uh, very excited about this panel. He's so excited I can smell him from all the way over here. Oh, is that what that is? Yes. That was so, that bean I ate. Uh, exactly. Of all the topics we discussed, of course, this one has garnered the, much, uh, the most, I think, debate. Uh, on one side, end user security awareness training is something that we must do in order to help our organizations be more resilient to attack. Users must be trained not to, as we say, click shit. Succumb to social engineering no. and ignore malicious behavior. How jaded security says, don't click shit. Yes, don't click shit. On the other side of the fence, some feel it's a waste of time. Not all users get it, and the attacks may only need one user to be a victim, so educating your entire workforce is uh, a fruitless effort. The threats are constantly changing, so users will need constant training, and security always just seems to get in the way. Somewhere in the mid- middle, perhaps there is a happy medium... So, I will start um, in order that they're listed in the show notes. Dave Itell, are you there? If you could just introduce yourself and provide some of your thoughts on end-user security awareness training. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Dave. And how awesome is that? Well, uh, hi from Miami, Florida, where it's about 9,000 degrees here. <laughs> Thanks. I notice uh, Lance Spitzner has joined us. Excellent. Which is good news. I guess we can talk about, you know, tanks and infantry later. Uh, you know, obviously the uh, position I have is that there are some people who have to do end-user security training of various forms due to compliance reasons, and good for them. Uh, I think it's probably about the same as doing your antivirus for compliance reasons, which is that you should buy the absolute cheapest one you can get away with and check that little checkbox for you. Other than that, I don't think there's any value to it whatsoever. I think that knowing that you can prevent 95% of the people in your industry from clicking on some link still gives you 5%. 5% is perfectly good if I'm an attacker. Uh, I don't think there's really much you can do when it comes to having users uh, use Word without having them get compliance on it. They really can't protect themselves. It's really not their job. What happens is you have system administrators and IT administrators who would like to make it think that the user should be doing a large part of this work because they're lazy or perhaps not very intelligent. Perhaps they had a bad upbringing. Uh, they have a uh, tough home life of some kind. So really, I just don't see the I don't see the impetus here behind an entire industry of people who are going to teach your users. To help secure themselves, it doesn't work. It doesn't work against generic malware or targeted attacks. So I'm not really sure what the point is, uh, except that it is written into some of the standards for, uh, you know, various certifications and whatnot that you have to get. So that's my perspective. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Lance, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Lance. How's it going? So just briefly introduce yourself and your thoughts on end-user security awareness training. Sure. My name is Lance Spitzner. I'm the training director of San Securing the Human program, and I do awareness for a living. It's now my passion. Um, just real quick, first of all, I'm going to agree with Dave 100% on the beginning when he says that compliance-driven awareness is worthless. I um, mean, it does make you compliant, which is important, but from a changing impact behavior, couldn't agree more. Um, if you're going to want to change behavior, you're going to have to do it consistently and continuously. If you patch the computer once a year, would you consider it secure? No. So people are no different. In a lot of ways, people are another operating system. They store, print, process, and transfer information like any other computer. So the training has to be continuous. And if you do it continuously, you can and do change behavior. 
where I would disagree with Dave is he says if 95% of the people are no longer clicking on the link and you only still have 5%, well, to me that's a tremendous success. Look at it from an organization's perspective. Instead of your security team spending all this time doing cleanup on day-to-day -day routine AV infections, what we can do is focus on the more advanced threat. We recently worked with a defense industry organization that had a number of infections drop so dramatically after training that they freed up half an FTE who could pay that saves money or focus on more advanced stuff like David rightly brought up. The other key thing is awareness is about so much more than just clicking on links. We talk about that because that's one of the easiest metrics to measure. But think about it. There's a whole issue of data protection, mobile device security, uh, encryption, cloud, all sorts of other issues that are involved. So when we're talking about reducing risk and changing behavior, lots of other topics to consider also. Excellent. Happy to give more examples later on. Okay. Thanks, Lance. Uh, Javed Malik, welcome. People. Um, and secondly, we have this very traditional narrow view of the world. So what we end up doing is we create something that we think is really good material for, uh, to make users aware, and it's generally shit. <laughs> and so, so we either use really boring, like, you know, here, read this 50 bullet point, you know, slide and pick this box and, you know, that, that's our awareness done. Or we'll use really patronizing cartoons of, uh, you know, a dog clicking on a link and saying, ah, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's really mature. Um, the, so we're, we're not really good at putting together, like, really good um, awareness material. Secondly, we, we have this narrow viewpoint of the world where we think, the only thing generally we focus on is um, how do we stop a, a user from getting targeted by a hacker or a, or a nation state or a targeted attack or, you know, something like that. Whereas information security is so much wider than that. It, it's generally about, I mean, for a lot of people, this is new. And, you know, you know dealing with, you know, electronic files as opposed to carrying around a briefcase for a large part of the workforce is something they, they've never been taught in school. So, so we're dealing with this whole middle, middle, you know, middle-aged class of working people who are in the most important positions in most of these organizations, entrusted with the most important information. And they really don't have much of a clue. So it's not just about, you know, if, you know, X organization decides to send you a targeted phishing email and telling them not to click it. But it's even the simple things such as like, okay, here's a, here's a file. You know, what should I do? Should I, should I put it on my mobile device? Should I let my kids use that mobile device? What, what are the options there? And, and it's about, you know, educating them to a point that, you know, where they're more aware of making that decision. A bit like how we teach kids how to safely cross the road. We, we give them a set of parameters, you know, stop, look, and listen, and then when you think it's safe, then, then, then cross. Uh, similarly, we, we need to build this education or this, this awareness, as, as, as the topic goes, of, you know, being Excellent. aware of what the dangers are and then letting them make the educated uh, decision as to whether to proceed or not with it. Excellent. Thank uh, you, David. However, oh, I'm sorry. like I to the beginning, yep, we're shit at, at presenting that information. <laughs> Excellent. Now that, that summarizes it nicely. Phone boy. Hello. So, um, so I, I'm from Checkpoint. I'll say that up for everybody who doesn't hate me. Um, and, and I think, you know, when I, when I think about the topic of end user awareness, um, what, the thing that comes to mind initially is, well, why is this the end user's fault? Because the end users don't know anything. They don't know what they're, you know, they asking my kids to be security aware, asking my wife to be security aware, who are not trained in the art of, of, of that. How can you? There, they don't. You know, there's there's issues with using a computer, right? I mean, forget you know, not clicking on attachments. Um, and I would also put this back on the on, on on the business. Why do we have business process that involves insecure processes? Uh, the example that uh, somebody gave me that I that I that I think is really effective is we have HR people that whose job it is is to read attachments from the internet, internet, i.e., resumes. Um, and, and why do we have business processes that involve things that we know are inherently secure? Um, and even if we train, and, and you know, the, the, 
think somebody else also mentioned don't click on attachments is the new mantra of the security Macarena. Um, so it, it's it's definitely way more than that. And, and even if and even the security professionals can get it wrong, right? We we you know I know not to click on shady links, but even once in a while I get I get fooled, and sometimes I click on something and. and Fortunately, my system is set up in a way that it, that, that I don't get that I, that I don't get owned necessarily. But anybody can get it wrong, um, and it, it's it's if if you know if you're tar- if the person is targeting you and they they know what you want to believe. If if you're shown that, you can be you can be tricked to do anything you want. And so it really so you know how do you train against that? How do you how do you make people skeptical 100 percent of the time? I don't even think that's possible. Um, the other thing that I think that with, with typical security awareness training is it's very disconnected from the discrete actions that you're taking, right? So, for example, if I send out an email to somebody in another organ, if I, let's say, I've, you know, I'm sending it to like five of my coworkers and I accidentally type one of them as an external address, um, how am I going to know that I, ac- that I accidentally sent it outside of the organization and I wasn't supposed to? Um, or if I'm going to a, a website that I'm not supposed to, how am I going to you know, how am I going to know what the policy is at that at that moment? Um, the way I like to think of it is that you know the security needs to be, uh, or that you know the, the sort of the policy training needs to be very connected to discrete actions that are being taken. Um, it's sort of like the speed limit signs that you go past that tell you how fast you're going. It's it's been proven that those speed limit signs now they don't they're not a they're not an enforcement mechanism like you can't, they won't let you go you know, more than 25 miles an hour, but they'll tell you you're going too fast. And what, what the studies have shown around that from the, from the organizations that have uh, created those um, or put, you know, put those signs in place is that they actually slow traffic down. There's a measurable impact on the, on the speed of the people going through that area. Um, and, you know, I, I, so this, this will put my checkpoint hat on for a minute. We, you know, in our, in our products, we now have this capability in, 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 called user check that goes through all of our products. And so when somebody is in an area, you know, doing something that's against the security policy, the user is informed right then and there that, hey, you're doing something uh, that might be against the policy. In some cases, it's just an informational message saying, hey, if you're going to YouTube, it's for business purposes only, make, to make sure of that. Um, or if you're about to send an email to somebody, you know, to somebody uh, offsite, you know, to you know, to something that's not in the corporation, uh, you can make sure that uh, you're not accidentally sending confidential information uh, to other people, and so and, and you get that real time feedback. So the minute I send that message, I get a message back saying, you might want to think about sending that message again. And and, and this does a couple things, and this is sort of I I think one of the the, the problems that we have with end user security awareness training in general is that we don't get user feedback. There might be a legitimate reason why a user needs to do something. If we don't have a mechanism to get that feedback and to find out why people are, need to do things that are against our policies, uh, we're not going to get better. And really, I, you know, I think one of one of the key things when I think about this is that you know, yeah, we're, we as security professionals, we kind of suck at talking to our users. Um, we also suck at talking to the business. And really, if we're going to have a security policy that's that makes sense and that everybody will do the right thing. It, we have to do it at the, the entire organization. We have to get everybody on board with the idea, and it's and yeah, it's getting down in the room and, and finding out what the real business needs are, so that we're not just coming up on high and dictating to users that this is what you're going to do or else. Um, need it needs to be a conversation, and you know, as, as geeks, yeah, that's a hard thing for us to do. But yeah, I, I think for effective uh, sorry, training, we definitely got to do that. I hate to cut you short, but in the in, in the respective conversation, I want to turn it over to Space Rob for his uh, initial thoughts. Um, well, thanks for Paul for having me on, and everybody should remember that we're doing we're here for cancer. So you know, donate to the cause, fight cancer, fuck cancer. Cancer um, sucks. In regards to security awareness training, I think I'm probably more in the, the camp with Dave there at the beginning, where we do have to do some minimal training to, to for end users. We do have to uh, teach them don't click shit, all right? But that's pretty much it. And we can just have a poster on the wall that says don't click shit, and we could probably be done with it. Um, because beyond that, we don't need to teach end users about encryption. We don't need to teach them about cloud. They're end users. They don't need to know that sort of thing. That's our job, right? It's our job to make sure that the network and the infrastructure and everything else is as secure as we can make it to protect the end users so that if they do click on shit, the world doesn't end. Okay? So <clears throat> it's important to give them a minimal amount of awareness, but we don't need to develop an entirely new industry around security awareness training. I just think that's really overkill. Now, we should be trying to advance 
the state of security to the point where we don't need to do security awareness training. Right? That's where, where our goal should be. Not educating the users so that they have intimate knowledge about all security aspects of their desktop. Because as somebody else pointed out, you're never going to get there. Right? You're going to get to 95, 99%. And you can't protect against accident. People are still going to make mistakes and send an email to the wrong person or send, click on the wrong link. And that's going to happen. And as a security professional, you need to have the infrastructure in place to be able to protect against that sort of thing happening. So I'm while gonna, awareness ahead. training is nice, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be like a major focus of your organization to get everybody, you know, experts in security. And since somebody else is making a car analogy, um, I'll just say in that particular analogy, when I see those little highway signs that tell me how fast I'm going, I think it's a high score. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> so I want to open up the panel with sort of a question or topic for debate. I want to talk about the 95% because I think that's really an important fact is, you know, some people feel that if you can get 95% of your users not to do stuff that is, will in turn result in some kind of security failure, um, that leaving that 5% is okay. There are some that feel that if the 5% will click on stuff, then, you know, why bother training the other 95%? So where do all of you guys kind of weigh in on the 95%? Uh, This is Lance. I can jump in real quick. Um, first of all, what controls 100%? I mean, think about it. All we're about is reducing and mitigating risk. Amen. In 10, 15, 20 years, we've been focusing on technology to secure technology. So we're getting pretty good at it. So my focus here is just by investing some basic resources on the human element, because if the human's an operating system, it's still back in the days of Windows NT and Windows 95, where everything's open. By putting some basic, you can reduce risk on the human side. I can. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're 5% or 95%. If you have the protections in place to protect against the, the 5%. So what, give me an example of a control that makes you 100% secure. You can't. Oh, wow. But all so that buy, oh, it's user where is nothing more than another control. But if, if doesn't, the control doesn't work. I mean, it does well, work. Dave, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to throw this back. So the control doesn't work, neither does patching. Neither does going through and scrubbing your applications for zero days because there's always going to be zero days. Just because a control doesn't work doesn't mean you throw it out. Or are you saying that this one's so horribly broken, so much worse than everything else, because patching and updating has worked so effectively for us that we should somehow cut this one out? I mean, we're looking for consistency here. Oh, I I totally agree. I think patching, if if patching is your security model, then yeah, you're broken. Um, but the, the, the real difference between 95% and 5% is nothing. They're equivalent to the attacker. So let's say you get it down to 0.5%. Really, it's still equivalent to the attacker. So, I mean, the only people I think are really worth educating in, a, in an institution are the, perhaps the CISO or the CEO or the executive. Maybe. Or maybe administrators because they have heightened permissions. Well, it's their job, right? It's people whose job it is to secure you. Otherwise, it's not your job. You guys should be educated about trading or, you know, writing blog posts or whatever it is that their job is. That's, well, that's no, their- it's, about, it's, it's about having secure business processes in the first place, right? If, if, you know, a part of the risk mitigation is, yeah, designing processes that don't, that uh, aren't going to get owned very, as easily, right? So exactly. if, if you have, if, if your, if your business process involves email attachments from the internet, maybe that's a business process that needs to be redesigned. Either that, if we're focusing on processes, what good is having good policy and good processes if your employees don't know about it? Well, exactly. They don't need to and know about it. Well, they, well, if well, it affects the way they do things, then yeah, they do. I, I, think, I think saying that we shouldn't educate end users is wrong, but I think the way we've been doing it is wrong. So if they do something that is insecure, if we tell them right at the moment that, hey, you're doing something that's potentially insecure, then we eliminate the whole, you know, getting everybody in a room and watching the PowerPoint presentation and, and, and everybody, <laughs> you know, thinking, thinking in their mind, wah, 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 right? I mean, we, we eliminate well, that. Well, that's not going to work, though, too. Remember, you have to go way beyond just PowerPoint. Well, what exactly. About- well, that's what I'm saying. If you can show them, it's 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 like you know when your kids do something wrong, you go you go tell them at that moment, hey, you're doing something wrong. That's a lot more effective. And 
you know, if we're going to educate users, I think we need to do it at the moment of incident. And, and we have to recognize that we're not going to get 100% of the incidents because there's, there's you know, for example, um, you know, my you know, favorite way of getting around the DLP policy is, uh, you know, is sneaker net or, um, or you know, or, or taking pictures of the screen or whatever. And there's, there's, there's only so many technical controls you can provide. But if, but if in the cases of, say, you know, accidental, right, the, the, the email example is great, right? If, if, you know, if I'm sending an email to five people and one of them, and one of them happens to be out of the organization and I can have an attached document uh, that's, that's marked confidential, right? In that moment that I accidentally do that, I didn't mean to do a DLP incident, but I've gotten educated that this is the policy related to this. So, you know, later, so later on, I may not do that or, you know, maybe I have a valid reason. But so you have to, I, I think, at, you know, at, at the incidents that we are aware of, the low hanging fruit, that's where we need to educate. We need to do it immediately at the incident. Uh, Josh Corman, you had comments. All right, so really fast. If you give up on people, you've given up entirely. Um, sucky security training is sucky. Good security training is good. Um, Love that insight, Josh. Well, <laughs> no, hello, <laughs> Captain Obvious. No, that, you know, I was talking to ITEL at the hallway at DEF CON, and I said, your 95% effective doesn't, is, is kind of not your best point because, you know, would you stop wearing birth control with condoms? It's 95 percent effective or against pregnancy. Hell yeah, it's 100 percent uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know it's uh, they have to be part of the solution. Most of the things in your your epic blog post, Dave, that you suggested to do instead of wasteful security training, lawyer training, um, they're also sub 100. percent So if you're looking for something that's perfect, you're going to have to just get a different profession. So that might be one of your arguments, but you, you do have some very good points. So we should focus instead on what kind of training sucks, and what kind See, of training is effective. And I, and I think a lot of us in this industry on that, on that note really kind of fall into this trap. Well, AV can be bypassed. Screw it. It's worthless. We're moving on. Uh, training users. It's not 100%. Screw it. It's worthless. We're moving on. Patching. Firewalls can be bypassed. Firewalls can be bypassed. Screw them. We don't need them. But I, I think that, that that's kind of we're kind of fatalistic by nature based on what, what interests us in computer security. And ultimately, if you look at anything that we do, it ultimately becomes an issue of diet and exercise. Um, it, it's something we have to do continuously. Realistically, Dave's right. We need to be constantly going through and looking at our applications, looking for vulnerabilities, not just once a year, but it needs to be something that's happening on a regular basis. We need to be patching our systems. We need to be doing data loss prevention. We need to be doing AV. And we need to be doing user awareness training, but we got to strive to do these in such a way that they do not suck. And I, I think just cutting out one or the other or all of them just because they don't meet our expectations is really uh, is a misleading argument, and I think it wastes time. Well, um, I, 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 just, I'm sorry. I have a, a question for the panel, kind of along those lines. I, I want to further define what we're making users aware of. I think we've defined the not clicking on stuff. I think another avenue is, um, you know, being educating them on the responsibility of their devices, their laptop, their phone, so they don't get lost. I think another aspect, and certainly as penetration testers, a lot of us have seen this, is educating users what physical attacks look like and arming our users with the knowledge of going, why is that person here? Why are they accessing this system or accessing this facility? So there's multiple aspects. And... Can we increase the effectiveness of our end-user security awareness program by broadening the scope a little bit and not just being so focused on preventing it from getting malware? Right. Um, this, this is Lance. Real quick, absolutely. The first thing I, I have found working with hundreds of organizations is most employees have no idea they're a target. They right. don't even know they're under attack. So a large part of the awareness training is teaching them how the bad guys are going to come after them and then why. And then one of the key things is teaching them the fundamentals of what social engineering is. Because technology changes so rapidly, you can't teach them, don't click on this, set this privacy set, you know, option in Facebook, whatever. I've learned that by focusing on fundamentals, people really open their eyes. Just a quick example. We were doing email, don't click this, don't do that, on awareness training and covering the basics of social engineering. Three days later, an employee received a phone call and it was a social engineering attack. Because of her training, not only did she figure it out, not only did she report it, but then she started beating up the phone caller and asking them for their information until they actually just gave up and hung up. How can you mean something like that most technology can't defend against? Now, the counterpoint to that is employees are transient, so those employees are going to leave. So, uh, and for those that want to, you know, kind of argue the counter, 
um, is it worth doing that level of training and, and keeping it up given that employees will cycle through and eventually maybe social engineering attacks will be successful? Yeah, you, I, 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 sorry, if I could just jump in there. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that we have to move away from is that this isn't a one-on-one -on -one thing. You're not doing awareness for each individual employee. What you're trying to do is create a culture. You're trying to change, make a culture change. It's a bit like drink driving. Um, you know, someone might still want to drink and, and drive, but if they've got friends who are aware and they, 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 they'll stop them. You know, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to make sure each individual is, you know, knowledgeable to, to nth degree. But as security professionals, we're probably at the, at the, at the high end of that person pool where we, we're like fully aware of what should be, uh, you know, as long as you've got a set uh, of, of all the security needs. Then you have CEOs or citizens that they, they've got then, and then you work your way all the way down to the end user. Each will have different levels of knowledge, but collectively they'll form a culture which is like, you know, that they'll look out for each other and they'll help each other. Javid keeps touching upon something that uh, I've, I've heard people move around, but communication as part of uh, your training. So teaching people what to do immediately after they notice something different. Users who've been using the computer for years upon years know when something's wrong. They just don't know what to do with it. They just know, hey, this moved, this blinked, and eh, I'll just ignore it. Uh, if they communicate more effectively with their IT department, with their security department, whoever is you know that first line of defense, you can catch stuff before it starts to get ugly. That's another great point. We've uh, had great success where it's not just about prevention, it's detection and response. I mean, we all agree, sooner or later, if somebody's motivated enough, they'll get in. But if you can teach your people to become a human sensor, then they can... Yes. Uh, we ran a, a, an exercise just last uh, month in an organization. It was a spear phishing attack. Um, somebody figured it out within five minutes, reported it, announcement went out, stopped it cold. So even if they do fall victim, if they go, uh-oh, and report it, that in itself does great job of mitigating the risk. Now, as far as changing culture, uh, in the past, what I've done is I've found whoever the educators were in that section or that, that er people that I would consider like the people that their peers go to to find answers for things and then make sure that they were educated really well so that when somebody asked that question, like, hey, I saw this thing, it's weird. They, like, instead of educating the entire team and, and having them like sit down with a test and that they can game and just keep hitting check boxes and just not really pay attention to it. We had, you know, five people in say a hundred or you know, that were able to give proper answers and, and help the response of that. I, I think everybody here can agree that we need some sort of level of awareness training. Uh, I think the debate here is how much of that training do people need and how much our organization should they depend on it. A lot of times I'm seeing that companies are depending on their awareness training as almost like their first line of defense is as, as basic and fundamental as like say their firewall when it really I don't think it should have that high level of, of importance inside of an organization yes it's needed the basic awareness needs to happen and you need to train your employees to do that but you can't depend on it to be the first line of defense if you will against an attack or an attack because the employee is the weakest link in the entire security chain and we'll continue yeah, and I, to be I, I, so I as long as we have that attitude. Yeah, I, I well, think there's so, no way to uh, change it. So, uh, yeah, but have I think you that, tried? <laughs> have you tried? The so employee on, will always uh, be the weakest one. Always. Because as long as you have that attitude, it will. But I, but I think there's some other controls, you know, they're kind of falling through the cracks. I mean, I, organizations have got to get it in their head that they're going to get compromised. And I think further, they got to say it's okay. But what's not okay is the compromise persisting for a month and a half, two months, six months, nine months. What's not okay is the attacker quickly spreading and taking over their entire organization. I mean, our architectures, leaving user awareness training aside, usually all it takes is one system to get compromised one way or the other, be it a zero day, with Java, whatever it is. Then the entire organization falls very, very quickly shortly thereafter. So I think that there's a lot of things that have to be moving in conjunction. So I absolutely agree with Space Ray. But, you know, we've got to look at architecture, but I think that training humans is definitely a big part of it, but of course, not the only part. So, Dave, I tell, we've uh, outlined some of the things that maybe could contribute to a successful end-user security awareness training. Uh, how would you poke some holes in that and uh, kind of make it so that maybe we don't need that much, uh, that much of it in our organization? I, I still don't think you need any of it, to be honest. I mean, I know Lance sells it. That's cool. How much of these... Uh, how much of these exercises cost? These exercises? Yeah. Uh, they're free. Go up on our website, 
Securityhuman.org slash How do you make money if it's free? For free. What's that? What are, what are you selling? Are those books aren't cheap back there. That's a nice <laughs> <laughs> hey, somebody's got to pay for this right here. Dave, in the last two little guys. hours, I got asked. No, if it's someone's allowed, someone's going to China. They said, <laughs> what should I do to protect it? Was it doing something around oh, the God, God. Please tell me you don't have an Enigma machine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Josh is... Dave, Dave. I tell. In the, yeah. last, in the last 24 hours, a colleague has said he's going to China and he wants to know some tips on how to protect his assets. Yeah. Should I tell him user awareness training sucks and tell him nothing useful or actionable? Isn't there some useful 80-20 rule here? Or yeah, I, I think you should, should say, I tell him nothing? bring any computer. Okay, but <laughs> that is edu- that is end user education. So I think your point about opportunity cost is excellent. You know, while you're doing a million dollars on security training that sucks, what aren't you doing? That's an excellent thrust of your argument. But I don't think the answer is do zero. Well, I think what we need to tell users is stuff that they un- that, that is very concrete. There's not a lot of room for uh, debate or discussion. So, for example, one of the things Checkpoint tells its employees is don't leave your laptop in the car, right? And that's a that's a, that's a very specific, concrete thing. And yet, yet, yeah, we've got FDE and we've got all this stuff on it. We still don't want the laptop stolen. So, uh, And I think whatever we train users to do and however we do it, uh, we need to we need to be very specific and concrete. So, um, you know, we, we say, you know, don't click stupid links. Well, how, how do we define what a stupid link is in a way that uh, an uneducated end user is going to be able to make that call himself? If, we, if we're very specific and explicit about what you do, like, you know, don't, you know, guests have to be escorted, you know, what, and, and, you know all your physical and, lo- and logical security controls, and, and make them as, as explicit and as black and white as possible, that's how we're going to win them. Draw parallels to what they already know, and it, the end user is not stupid. They're they're a person that you know they're they're educated to do whatever it is that they're doing for a job. They just aren't able to translate uh, computer language into what it is that they do with the computer. Let's say they're an accountant. They're uh, you know they're an expert in their field. So if you understand what they do as an accountant and what they do as a person, they go home. They they walk in there. To walk to their front door, they unlock the door, which they've locked when they left. They understand basic security for themselves. Physical security translates well to this area of things. So if you can teach somebody like, hey, you don't walk down a dark, dingy alleyway, well, this link is kind of like that, or 4chan is it's kind of like that. Just don't don't go there. Yeah, people you'll tell get things. Keep getting broken into and people they keep do. getting mugged. We're back to that 95% question. Well, so well, can we can we improve things? So I have a question I put in here. Should we implement a system of rewards? You know, people that may be malware free and maybe get a free iPad or punishment. If malware is on your system, you have to watch a 90 minute HR video. And how does that play into end user security awareness training? Uh, keep in mind, it also depends on the organization. Different organizations will have different tolerance of risk. If you're a university and somebody just continuously clicks on links or continuously shares their password, (laughs) you may have to do a slap on the wrist. If you're a financial organization and somebody continuously shares their password, shares data, or keeps clicking on links, you fire them. So I'm not trying to say security awareness is better than other defenses, but we need everything we have. We need all these different tools in our bag. What I'm trying to focus on is this is just one we haven't really leveraged. I don't get where I'm not allowed to click on every pixel on my screen. That just seems weird to me. That doesn't seem weird to you? There's a pixel on my screen. I'm not allowed to click on it? That's just bizarre. No, Dave, that's that's just a piece of dirt. (laughs) It's just weird. It's a weird perspective that people have in their heads now. I mean, you wouldn't know. There's no way for you to know, right? There's no no way to educate you properly, right? I could have owned you via that headphone right now. Well, that's why we do. Oh, yeah. If, if you're targeted enough and skilled enough, there is no doubt you can socially engineer me and own me with a link. But then again, well, which technology or control is 100% none. None. That's well, why we have layered security. be a lot better than educating people not to click funny apples, right? See, I would disagree because, once again, is if we can reduce 95% of the risk, and it's just not clicking, but mobile devices, social engineering, social networking, whatever. If we can reduce it 95% by just making a small investment, you've already got your money back and much more just on the drop in the number of infections, let alone the problems with passwords and mobile devices and data sharing and things like that. How much is a securing the human program cost after the free fraud? 
Um, it's a lot cheaper than Kansas. Oh! <laughs> wow. Oh! Damn. I know, but it doesn't provide any value, right? Is that why? I mean, it's... it's oh! It's... The thing about these things is, like, you have on here a fishing assessments planning package. Right? And fishing is the obvious example that doesn't work. Because I can send you 100 emails for the same price as one. So what is the advantage of reducing your number of clicks to one out of 100 as opposed to 100 out of 100? Well, Out- zero. Outbreak versus cycling, single host here, we're infection. We're coming back to the 95% discussion. If I have uh, 100 emails that I'm sending out, I'm 100 times more likely to get detected. Yeah, also keep why? in mind, it goes beyond just falling victim too. And why would you care if you are detected, I guess is the other question. But I think, I mean, we also had an interesting comment earlier from Javid, who's normally based in London, and he wants to train people how to cross the road. But in London, you have those sophisticated locks everywhere you go, and you can't cross the road except in very determined ways. And they drive on the wrong side of the of the road, too, which is weird. They, they do drive. <laughs> no, we, we, yeah. That's a good, that's a good point. I mean, we don't even have to go as far as England. We don't even have to go as far as England to look at this, because in the U.S., when people go to get their driver's license, there's really almost no training involved. You take a 10-question test. And you sit in the car for five minutes with some other guy watching you drive. And that's the only thing, that's the only training you no, get. No, 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 no. That's no, how no. it is. You're wrong things. on that. And the reason why is because if you look at that type of situation, um, it's, it, it's pretty much the type of training that we're immersed in. I mean, ever since we're little kids, our moms are saying, you know, don't cross the road until the light's set up. We're constantly reinforced with that. We're driving. We're with other drivers that are not getting into accidents. So we are actually picking up habits whether or not we're being actively trained to pick up those habits or not. But if you look at computers, there's not a lot of model in that saying, well, yeah, you know, I spent all my time with Bob and he's a safe surfer. We aren't actually training our users what the good behaviors are. Whereas where you're talking about driver's license, pretty much society as a whole, we're ingrained as far as what those good behaviors are and also what the consequences are because we actually see it happen. We see the ambulance, we see the fire trucks on the side of the road. So I don't, I don't think that the idea of not being trained applies to cars as it would with computer security or user awareness. I love you, John, but having just driven from Massachusetts to Rhode Island the past two days, I'd like to counter that. We don't have other drivers here in South Dakota. So well, Jack, where you're, where you're going, any you don't need any roads. That's right. Um, but we avoid cows at all costs. I wanted, I wanted to go back around to the panel at this point, give everyone two to three minutes, uh, closing thoughts. I'll start in reverse order. Space Rogue? Well, I think the big question here is that the big issue that we've been talking about is that there's there's a lot more weight put on security awareness training than I think that there should be. And we're not putting more effort into other technologies and other defenses that are going to be more effective. Now, yes, we've discussed that we can't be 100% uh, against any one thing, but your your security awareness training should not be the number one de facto frontline defense that you have uh, for your organization because your, your weakest link is your end users. And your weakest link is the, is the one that's going to be breached first. So you need to have additional defenses, backup defenses, layered security, which we all talk about a hundred times over and over again, to, to manage the entire threat picture and not put all this focus on the end users and their, and their security awareness training because the awareness training is only going to be so effective and it's not going to be able to, to really protect you because you're still going to have that one person who either makes a mistake or gets all. Oh boy. And that's, that's my info. Yeah. So I think the, the one thing I, I think, you know, train, I think training is important. I think we need to look at how we do it differently. One, one point we didn't bring up is that, uh, and, and we talked about it with the driving, is the peer to peer training, right? So if we can train key people in the organization and spread the awareness, you know, it's not coming from security people, but from their peers, it's going to be way more effective. Now, is that going to step everything? No, we need to we need to you know we need to train people, and we need to have better business processes, and 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 it's it's so so it's it's a key part. We need to look at how to communicate the message more effectively. Do it at the time of the incident with, with technologies like checkpoints, user check, but you know other technol- other other firewalls and security products do the same thing. But the the, the but. So, and, and that, as I say, it's, it's all part of, you know, all of that is part of making a more secure organization. Javid? Javid, you there? Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Closing uh, thoughts? Yeah, sure. So, um, I think, like, uh, Space Rogue, I think, uh, touched upon it. 
uh, the, the, what I feel is that you know awareness isn't one of those things when you do and then you pass responsibility onto the user, and that's the wrong way of looking at it. You know, you do it, but then you still have your controls in place. What what a lot of companies are not clear on at all is what message they actually want to give to the mess uh, to the users. Uh, yeah. Don't click stuff is, is one example, and it's an obvious example, but what else is there? And, and it's got to be related to the actual organization and, and the way in which they do business. Uh, and finally, companies, I just, uh, I'll go back to my original point, they just absolutely suck at delivering the message in an engaging way. People just aren't interested when, when, when the training's delivered, by and large. Um, so it needs to be done in an engaging way and a memorable way. So whether that be through peer, whether it be through more creative ways of uh, education, whether it be pop-up messages, um, you know, that needs to be looked at. Lance? Um, so far, agreeing with what everyone said here, it's just another layer. Uh, what I'm proposing is it's a layer very little has been done at. Um, most people have a very bad uh, impression of awareness simply because most awareness in the past has been bad it's been focused, uh, compliance focused, training once a year. And if you do PowerPoint once a year and then wonder why nobody's changing behavior, you probably shouldn't be doing your job. Just like patching computers and securing the environment is a continuous process, like uh, folks were saying here, you've got to identify those key things that you're going to focus on, what topics are going to reduce the most risk and then communicate it effectively. Don't think like security, think like marketing. That's been probably one of the biggest holdbacks to effective awareness training is uh, we've been doing a really bad job of communicating it. Bad training is bad. Dave? Yeah, you're not yeah. Power yeah. Death by PowerPoint is not going to make your organization more secure. Which Dave? So, uh, Dave Wittell? All right, well, I apologize for the uh, cheap shot out there, Lance, but... Uh, I'm going to just point out that I think in this argument, the only people I've seen really stand up for increasing the money spent on security awareness training is people who sell security awareness training. Uh, I think the fact is that I agree people do do a bad job of communicating, but communicating and marketing, and these are continuous processes that are very expensive. I think that if you apply the right technical controls, perhaps something avant-garde, perhaps something big data, I think you can get return on investment that is massively larger than trying to change behavior, which is hugely difficult and has low return on investment, even if you succeed. Uh, and someone earlier mentioned that employees are transient. I like to think that our employees aren't transient, but certainly, uh, you know, they may have a hobo-like nature and, uh, <laughs> They may, they may occasionally yearn for the freedom of clicking on every pixel on their screen. <laughs> Don't train There's someone who talks about uh, not moving the responsibility of what, uh, to the users. I think um, uh, that was Javed. He's like, you know, it's not about passing responsibility to the user. I think the behavior you really want to change here is the organizational business behavior as Javed said, and that really requires that you educate not the end users, but the executives. And when we do security awareness training, we only do the executives. And we only do things that can change their organization strategically. It is definitely not about clicking on links and things like that. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Space Rogue said that it shouldn't be the de facto frontline defense. Um, and a large part because you can't afford for it to be because I think uh, your end user defense fails so often. So, in summary, I think... There are some amazing technical controls coming out, and, and technical controls have gotten almost a bad rap. Uh, some amazing stuff coming out. Uh, I think that and used for security awareness training. Uh, I've yet to hear anyone really of it who doesn't have some skin in the game there. Uh, not not that you know it's a bad thing to tell someone not to bring things to China. Uh, I just think that's probably the limit of the usefulness there. I mean. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with some of you do, some of you don't. I've and, seen uh, some good training, and I'm a fan of it, and I have no skin in it, so there. Stop saying that. Who is that talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Josh Corman. Uh, well, let's go to Dave Johnson for his closing thoughts. Thanks, Dave Vitale. Uh, for the most part, um, most of the people that I've spoken to that I, I've said that you need to start educating users a little bit further on this uh, have started to develop this like multiple dollar signs in their head idea that this is going to be extremely costly 
this is going to take a lot of time and man hours. And it really doesn't have to be that complicated. If you develop it from sort of a, a good starter and you have a good plan, and it, it, it can be very, very self-growing. If you educate the right users in the right way, um, it can kind of take care of itself in a way that you can automate patching. There is a patch for human stupidity, not just one. There's multiple patches. Josh Foreman? I wasn't going to make any closing statements. Once again, uh, if you give up on the humans, you give it up. So uh, humans will do whatever they're allowed to do with the boundaries they're allowed to do it. So therefore, it cannot and should not be the only line of defense. There's probably better ways to spend your money. That said, they are probably your last mile. You can turn your 40,000 liabilities into 40,000 security sensors if you stick to some sort of 20 rule and do security training that doesn't suck like uh, Andy Ellis has done, like uh, Bob Rudis has done. So I think it's really bad to, to give up. <laughs> Bob Brutus did a killer presentation of Source Box, and if it's on video, you, you should watch it. Absolutely. He does a really, yep. really good job. So I hate absolute statements. All absolute statements suck, except that one I just did. <laughs> uh, John Strand, do you have any closing thoughts, my friend? I think that just summed it up perfectly. I think that there's no control that's going to be 100%. Um, I do agree with Dave that there's some really cool technologies that are coming out. Um, however, I think it's, it's ironic coming from a guy who probably knows better than just about anybody else on the face of the planet, how easily a lot of those technical controls can be bypassed. <laughs> um, so it basically means there's going to be nothing that we can do that's going to be a hundred percent solution. We need to continue moving all of them forward. Um, and once again, I also don't have any skin in the game. Uh, every time Lance sells securing the human, I don't make a dime off of it, but I do see my customers and we have actually gone through and uh, implemented good security awareness training and it has made an impact. But what we've noticed is if we wait a year in between actually doing the training and making training that does not suck, then it's worthless. It needs to be continuous, like patching like any other security control that's out there. Excellent. Thank you everyone for coming on the panel and Thank you. debating Thanks. the topic. Uh, Dave, Lance, Javed, Damon, uh, Space Rock, thank you all very much. And, of course, all the Paul.com members and in-studio guests uh, for participating in the panel. Um, again, go donate to Breast Cancer Research. Visit paul.com.com forward slash 300. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching up to this point. Uh, and thank you to our special guests. And we're going to take a short break now and come back with a special lunchtime edition of our cigar show called The Stoey Geeks. So... Thanks, everyone.